we're here with Frank Servo, who's with the DEEP Forestry Division. And I'm going to let him introduce <clears throat> himself and what his role is with DEEP. Um, so hello, I am Frank Servo, uh, and I am the, uh, as Gene mentioned, I work for the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protections Division of Forestry, and I am the Eastern District Service Forester. And so my uh, primary job is to, uh, to work with, provide uh, outreach, education, uh, and assistance to uh, private forest landowners uh, in, uh, in Eastern Connecticut. Um, and, uh, and so the, uh, generally speaking, the way that, um, there's a couple different uh, sort of primary functions that I have. Um, uh, and that's doing general outreach uh, and sort of outreach events and, and that type of thing around uh, current uh, issues and events in um, in the forest and forestry world. Um, and then uh, I also do um, I can I do site visits uh, with um, forest landowners. Uh, so if uh, if you own a piece of property um, in Eastern Connecticut, um, and when I say Eastern Connecticut, uh, the we're generally speaking about uh, New London, Wyndham, Wyndham, and Tolland counties, um, but there you can also visit uh, the Connecticut Service Forestry uh, website uh, on the, the DEEP website to see there's an exact map of which towns are in which district. Um, but um, yeah, so anyway, so I, I do site visits with uh, forest landowners um, and uh, we'll talk about uh, what uh, what's going on uh, on your property and what your management goals are and I'll make give you advice make recommendations about things that you can do uh, to manage your property um, and also uh, connect you to, to resources um, to, to help you uh, do that management effectively um, and uh, then I also um, I oversee uh, I help to oversee the uh, forest land taxation program um, so uh, I can help advise you as to uh, whether or not um, your forest uh, can be enrolled uh, in the forest land taxation program, uh, and help you connect, help connect you to uh, again those resources um, to get the, that property, get your property enrolled, uh, or maintain your enrollment um, in the forest land taxation program. Um, and so that's uh, that's the, that's mainly what uh, what my job my job is. Uh, and so if you're a forest land owner uh, in eastern Connecticut, um, please do reach out. I have a question about that um, taxation program, which is known as the PA 490 program That's for right. forestry. Um, there are minimum acreage requirements, is that correct? Um, yes, so there are, um, uh, the minimum acreage uh, is that you have uh, 25 um, forested acres on your property and that uh, that, in, that has to be exclusive of, of any um, sort of non-forested acreage or any minimum zoning that your town may require for something like a home or, a, or any other structure that you have on the property. Um, and there, and there, there are a couple different, there are also potentially if you have multiple different parcels, um, you may be able to enroll uh, parcels at a minimum of 10 acres if they're agglomerated as uh, part of several different holdings that you have. So if you have questions about whether or not um, your uh, your ownership uh, is eligible for uh, enrollment in the PA 490 program. Um, please do uh, reach out to me, and we can sort of talk that through. Uh, and then um, there also are requirements for the uh, the characteristics that the forested uh, acreage has to have. Um, and uh, you know, so I would be able to connect you to a qualified forester who could uh, put together a, a report um, that you would then submit to your town's assessor. Uh, to have your uh, property enrolled in the 490 uh, taxation program. Is there a requirement for the PA 490 program that you have a forest management plan? Um, there is not at this juncture a requirement that you have a forest management plan. Um, however, you, uh, you do have to have a uh, qualified forester's report. And that's, um, uh, it's, you, it's sort of you could think of it as a sort of a very um, a very basic um, forest management plan, um, but it doesn't it does not really serve the function of a forest management plan. It's more meant to document conditions and make some recommendations for uh, some things that you might do to manage uh, the property. And then it also is just meant as a documentation to um, 
to show that your forest uh, does uh, meet the qualification step four uh, in the statute which established the PA 490 program. What about smaller uh, forested parcels? So a lot of people think of them as their, their woods as opposed to a forest. Sure. Um, do you have a role with helping people manage their woodlands or making suggestions on woodland management? Um, yeah, absolutely. So uh, a forest is a forest no matter how small, right? So maybe, um, you know, uh, on your, your, your personal woodlot um, or even your backyard forest um, or backyard woods, um, the, however you like to think about it, um, there's, uh, there are many benefits to uh, having a healthy and well-managed um, forested system. And so, um, while my, uh, generally speaking, my, my role for uh, doing those, those site visits that I mentioned, um, there's a, sort of a minimum requirement of uh, at least 10 acres um, for me to be able to come out and, and do a site visit. Um, but, uh, you know, we can do, there's still um, many, many things that, that you can do uh, and that I could help to advise on a smaller parcel um, than 10 acres. Um, and, you know, like I said, no, no matter how small, there's, there are many benefits that a, a forest or a woodlot or, or a backyard woods, backyard forest, any of these things can, um, can give to you, to, uh, to society, to, um, you know, to uh, all the various different communities that inhabit uh, the forest, from wildlife to um, ecosystems. So, um, yeah, to, don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, with any questions about, um, you know, smaller, smaller woodlots as well. About 74% of this Natchog watershed is forested, majority of it being privately owned. What would you want to tell the private forest land owners about the role of their forest in this larger, healthy watershed? Um, yeah, so um, so private forest land owners um, play a vital role uh, to maintaining healthy forests uh, in the, the in this watershed, and um, and so uh, it's 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 vitally important that um, that you you know every 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 parcel um, that sort of agglomerates together uh, to have uh, you know the the uh, forests that we have in the Natchog watershed. And um, you know issues that, that start to happen on, on an individual parcel um, can then sort of cascade to have uh, negative impacts for the neighboring parcels and, and the whole watershed at large. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's it's very important that um, you know each each individual landowner um, is, is you know that you're able to think sort of think uh, beyond just the boundaries of your own property. Um, and think about the role that your individual woodlot um, or your, your forest is playing um, in the, the larger picture. Um, How do forests help keep our water clean? Um, yeah, so there are, there are many different ways um, that forests um, have a positive impact on water quality. Um, and so uh, sort of the first, first thing to think about is um, the way that that water is introduced, uh, you know, the way that water cycles into the watershed, and that's um, generally in the form of rainfall. Uh, and when that, uh, when those raindrops are falling on sort of bare, bare ground or uh, an impervious surface like a, a road, you know, a paved road or a parking lot, um, they, uh, if they fall directly on the ground, they're going to be falling at high velocity, uh, and they're, and if it's an impervious surface, they're going to go, they're not going to have anywhere to go, but they're going to just uh, sort of wash over land uh, and they'll just quickly make their way to the nearest um, you know nearest surface water system um, whereas if when they're falling on a forest um, they're they're slowed down uh, on their descent from things like falling through a forest canopy they're striking leaves and branches and other types of vegetation they might uh, run down the trunk of a tree um, or drip off of a, a leaf something like that um, and then um, you know you have a uh, you have a, a, a more um, heterogeneous uh, layer um, that those rain raindrops are going to pass through before they reach the soil, and so that having that velocity slowed down um, really helps to minimize the uh, the amount of uh, disturbance that the raindrops do to the soil, um, thereby uh, protecting the integrity of that soil, 
um, and um, keeping the keeping the rainwater from moving so quickly into uh, the stream or, or brook or, or whatever the, the um, relevant surface water um, system is. And then um, also the uh, water can be sort of uh, held um, by the you know sort of the land, the upland land in the watershed things like absorb you know the plants will absorb that water right all plants need water uh, to survive and uh, so they can absorb it and, and hold on to it um, instead of again allowing it to just quickly pass in uh, sort of a, a flood or, or we want what we might call a pulse um, of, of rainwater um, that will be sort of a, a large uh, influx of water into a stream or river or a lake um, or a reservoir um, and uh, it's it's much much better for the the quality of the water in that system if it's if it's sort of held in the watershed above the system uh, the, the the surface water system and then allowed to slowly uh, uh, percolate um, and then that also um, uh, increases the ability for that rainwater to actually infiltrate into the ground as opposed to moving uh, above ground um, and into into the stream or river it can actually percolate into the ground uh, and help to recharge uh, groundwater uh, aquifer um, and that's very important um, in this especially in, in this watershed where um, many many of the, the people who live in the watershed get water from uh, uh, residential groundwater um, systems and so uh, by having a healthy forest um, you actually increase the amount of, of groundwater recharge and the amount of filtration of that water before it reaches the groundwater aquifers. Um, we can't live without our groundwater that's for sure. Um, how does uh, a landowner select their priorities if they were to do a forest management plan? What would you guide them to do? Um, well, so I think first I'll, I'll speak about um, what sort of what a forest management plan is uh, and why it's important. Um, and so that uh, management plan is uh, a document which gives you uh, a lot of uh, a lot of insight into your property. Uh, and so um, you'll have a documentation of the current conditions um, uh, on on your property, um, and that so that allows you to have an understanding of sort of well, what do we have in terms of of trees, of species composition, of uh, how big are they, um, how old are they, um, and uh, also you get some insight into the historical context um, in terms of uh, human land use, uh, also um, sort of the ecological, geological context of you know what's what's the soil here, um, you know how did we how did we reach this point? So what happened before to uh, to get us to the, the forest that we have now? Um, You'll also have um, you'll ha you'll and then based on that, um, you know, you'll do a um, you know you speak with whoever's preparing the plan about what your goals are um, for for your property, uh, and then you'll you'll receive uh, advice and, and recommendations about uh, how to how to reach those goals and realize those goals, um, and uh, it helps. It gives you a nice. Um, Sort of timing structure about different management activities um, and sort of when to do them and it can help to sort of you know uh, there there are many there's a lot of things going on in the forest right it's a very the forests are very complicated systems um, and so thinking about how to, to, to achieve your goals uh, on a forested system can be a very complicated process and there can be you know many many different things that you want to do and it can kind of seem sort of scattered and overwhelming about like oh you know I have to do so many different things in the forest but management plan will outline sort of the priorities for um, you know this this is a really a top priority versus this is you know maybe a lower lower down in the priority chain uh, and it'll give you a, a, a schedule sort of for when you want to be doing these how often do you want to wait five years before you do something or do you need to do it right now um, so it can kind of help to, to organize and focus uh, your uh, understanding of, of how to manage your property um, and in terms of, uh, of setting those goals uh, and understanding, um, you know, what, what your goals are, um, you know, maybe, maybe, you, maybe you already have a really clear understanding of what your goals are on this property. Why, you know, why do I own this forest? Or why do I own this woodlot? And, and, wh and what, what do I want out? Um, 
And if that's the case, um, then you can articulate that to um, to the, the forester who's preparing um, your management plan, uh, and then uh, you know work with that person to um, to to set forth a, a, a series of recommendations for management that will help you meet those specific goals. Um, or perhaps you you have a, a you know you have a less clear understanding of, of what your goals are, uh, and and maybe um, you know maybe they're they're less tangible, uh, and they're more sort of nebulous as to you know you you like uh, you, you like the aesthetic of, of forests and you want to maintain that, or um, you know you find it very calming and you just enjoy being in the forest, and uh, and that's that's great as well, uh, and that's that's really important. Um, that you know, without in the absence of, of management, um, you know, though those benefit or those goals are less tangible, um, uh, in the absence of management, you still um, might not achieve them. So, um, basically, having having a clear uh, clear understanding of, of uh, what you want out of your property um, really can help uh, to decide about what are the things that you're going to do. Uh, and then also another just uh, another important piece um, that having a, a management plan can help you uh, to realize and can kind of help to sort of clarify some of the, the goals is that um, you know working with a, a professional forester on your property um, can help to uh, sort of bring in that bigger picture right the understanding that um, the the benefits that come from your forest uh, or your property or your woodlot they um, they're not you know they can be a lot larger than just you and just your property they can kind of extend beyond the boundaries into a, a greater landscape um, and that's why things you know thinking about something like the upper Natchog watershed for example uh, is is very important and you know knowing having that sort of context that your, your property actually falls within um, this this watershed and um, so there are certain things that you can consider it's like well if if you if you do uh, certain certain thing, you might actually help to improve, uh, you know, to be providing um, cleaner uh, water into the groundwater aquifer that supplies water to to your home and your neighbors' homes uh, and the rest of your community. Um, or you might be helping to protect um, the, the streams and and rivers that uh, that flow into uh, an above ground drinking water reservoir that provides. Uh, clean drinking water for um, for other members of your community or, or yourself um, and so you know things like that uh, or thinking about wildlife populations that might not um, might not live exclusively on your property but they might use your property for one piece of their life cycle or they might you sort of migrate through it um, or you know there's a variety of different ways that um, you know the conditions on your property um, can impact Sort of the larger landscape uh, picture, and so that's that's another piece that um, can kind of help you to understand your property and and set some um, some goals uh, for it. Thank you. Um